Welcome everybody. Um, we kind of skipped through the introductions, didn't we? I'm Christine Nielsen. I'm Orby Dingwall. And we are your MyNet librarians. Today we are talking about Googling for good evidence. Um, so thank you for coming. Um, I will point out just at the beginning that a fair bit that we're going to talk about today also applies to other search engines as well. So if you're not a fan of Google, not to worry. Uh, today we're going to talk really quickly about uh, MyNet services. We're going to talk about how Google works, um, do a little bit of a Google searching, and then talk about critical appraisal, which if uh, you've attended any of our sessions in the past, you know is uh, one of the things we like to talk about a lot. So, um, first things first, if you are, uh, haven't really, you know, used GoToWebinar a whole lot, um, if you lose your menu at the bottom of your screen, there's this nifty little flower type icon. Um, and if you need to get your, your, your menu back, that it should come back up. All right, so um, the menu you have should look like this. Um, sometimes also you've got uh, it it's, might be collapsed because of that um, little orange arrow that points in. It had been clicked, pointed in, right? So um, you need to uh, to click on that as well. Um, we have a question box that you can enter questions, and we're going to try and keep an eye on those throughout. Um, and then, yeah, that's just the box. You type in your question, and you press send. And... and, and uh, Depending on, on at what point we are in the, the session, we will we will do our best to, to answer in a timely fashion. All right. So, uh, MyNet. What is MyNet? Um, basically, we are a library service for folks who work at Manitoba Health, Seniors and Active Living. Um, although, I guess that, that name is going to change uh, fairly shortly uh, with, the, with the recent cabinet shuffle. Um, we also serve fee-for-service physicians who and staff of participating regional health authorities, which basically translates to not the WRHA because they have their own library service. So um, your MyNet team includes Orvi and myself, but we've also got Gail and Cheryl. And um, if you have ever requested articles, Cheryl is the, the magician that makes it all happen, gets those to you. Okay. Um, MyNet's pretty awesome in the sense that it is not at a fee, right? Um, can't talk. Um, so it is funded by the province, so individuals, users don't have to um, pay for access or, or services or anything. So that's that's pretty nice. Um, and if you don't have a library card, uh, just for you know ease of when you actually need something, um, we suggest that you get one. Um, it doesn't it doesn't take a huge amount of time. Um, but if you and we need to get a library card up and going for you first, this will just save you that step. Okay, so uh, I mentioned services, and basically we are service oriented. Literature searches are something that we'll do on your behalf. We have access to a variety of subscription databases that are not available to the general public. Um, document delivery is uh, libraries get you an article. Um, so if there's something in particular that you want to read, you can send us a request and we'll get a, a copy of that and send it to you. Um, we also do current awareness. So if there's a particular journal you like to follow or a topic that's of interest, we can set up an alert that will send you um, an, an email with a notice when, when something that is either on, on a particular topic or um, something new published from a particular journal title is available. Right, so you just get a heads up that way. Okay, um, education, training, and orientation, like here, is also on our list, and um, we have access to up to date, which is which is actually a pretty big deal. Um, so, anyone who is a MyNet client, um, as well as folks at Cancer Care, um, they have access to up to date, and that's the only thing that we have that is a direct access product. So everything else you would uh, access through us, but you can access up to date yourself. <clears throat> and if you need more information, um, you can contact us or you visit our website um, and we have information on that as well. Okay, so. Whew. <laughs> trying to get to the good stuff here. Um, so 
every like everybody's everybody's heard of Google. Um, I'm, I'm sure some of you already have a, a sense of how Google works. Um, they have uh, these these programs called spiders. They go out and they 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 crawl the internet and they basically index what's out there, right? So they they move from page page to page um, and and basically provide a bit of a roadmap, right? So you can search for things and, and find stuff. Um, no one entirely knows, except for the people who work at Google, how their algorithm works, um, because it is proprietary. Um, so Google as a product is a search engine, Google as an entity is a corporation, right? They're publicly traded and they have they have various various little uh, services that they set up. Um, so they, they, they keep that information to themselves. Um, in terms of the things that we do know about how the, the algorithms work, uh, we know that they actually change them uh, every so often. Uh, so some, sometimes things look different than they used to, um, and there's really kind of no telling when that's going to happen. <clears throat> um, and where things fall on your list of results depends on a lot of things. Um, it can depend on, on where you are. For one thing, um, the the algorithm takes into account your your location, so that could be determined uh, by your IP address for your computer. Um, if you're using it on your phone, um, like if you have an Android phone, as an example, um, then it, it kind of knows where the phone is. Um, so if anybody has ever used the the maps to like figure out the best way to drive from one place to another, you can see like the red. That's all the traffic jam, and the green is, um, you know, the the freely moving traffic. Um, they gather information on where people are and everything, and they build that into information that you can use. So the search results are the same. Um, so the theory being, if I'm searching for something, I'm probably going to be more st most interested in the things that are in my geographic area as opposed to halfway across the world. I mean, not necessarily, depending on what you're looking for, but that's that's kind of how it works, right? Um, and it also takes into account what you've what you've searched for before, right? So if you uh, do a lot of searching for information about, um, uh, let's say, you know, mental health and stigma, right? It it kind of files that away for later, um, and you search for um, kind of influence each other. Right, so it's it's an attempt to make you see the most relevant things according to what it thinks is what you're looking for, um, which is great um, in some respects. But at, at the same time, if if you if you aren't too careful, um, you can and and you don't really think about it all that much. You kind of get a bit of an echo chamber. Um, yeah, I'm I'm sure you've probably heard about that before, right? Um, and as I mentioned, like the Google accounts. If you're signed in, well, you know, it's keeping track of your activity there as well, and that all feeds into what it shows you when you do your search. Um, yeah, so this is related <laughs> to to ads um, as well, right? Because as I mentioned, um, it's 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 kind of tailoring results to you, where you are, what you're, what you're interested in. Um, and so you, uh, you may or may not have noticed over time, there's been a lot more ads um, that come up in your search results. And the way they look has changed. Um, and, and of course, it also depends right, on what your topic is. If there's some commercial aspect of something, you're going to get a lot of ads. Um, but if it's something um, that would be real hard to make some money off of, then you're probably not going to get so many ads in your results. Um, and an example here is uh, sleep apnea, right? So I'm going to do a quick flip here. And we're going to look for sleep apnea equipment. So, like you can, oh, it helps if you spell it right too. So obviously, this is something you can buy. So, like right front and center, we've got all kinds of ads for uh, CPAP machines on the side at the, on the top. Um, we've got a nifty little map, like where in Winnipeg, because I'm in Winnipeg. Um, might I get CPAP machines? Um, and it kind of keeps on going until we get down to the bottom. Um, and at this point, we're kind of getting into uh, more information 
about CPAP machines, so like tips for avoiding 10 common problems from the Mayo Clinic. That's probably um, a good one if I was looking for information to give to a patient, for example. Um, we've got some other stuff. Um, I actually if keep on going down towards the bottom. We've got um, sleep disorder equipment FAQ from the WRHA. Um, which would probably also be pretty handy um, for me if I was looking for information for a patient or myself, really, about CPAP machines, right? So um, you can see also as we get to the bottom, we've got, we've got a little bit more advertising, right? So that's just like a, a quick and, and dirty example um, of the type of thing you might see in a search. Um, and it's a very, very quick, easy search. The, Hi, Chris, um, you, you want to just go back to that for a second? You bet. Um, when you talked about changes to ads that have happened over the last couple of, of years, did they used to be like? Can you um, can you tell us? Can I elaborate? Little, yeah, can you elaborate? I can, and I was actually going to. Um, so, if you're interested in, in how they have changed, um, there. Oops, there is a an article here from. The Washington Post, which illustrates that very nicely. So in the beginning, when Google was brand shiny new, um, it was developed by academics. It was all about um, essentially turning the internet uh, into a library, for lack of a better way to put it. You know, here are, are all the things, um, all the information. This is how you how you find it. Um, so then, as as time has gone on, they've gotten more ads. So at one point, um, they had ads. They were like in a different color, in a box that was a different color. Um, they were always in, you know, at the top um, and the, the, the not, not as many, right? Um, but if we go now and we do searches like that, search for the CPAP equipment, like you had ads at the top that like, like there weren't any particular color, you know, in terms of difference from the regular results. It did have a little thing that, you know, said add, um, but you gotta kind of be paying attention. Um, it had the, you know, the, 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 the shopping part, <laughs> for lack of a better put it, with like the pictures and the prices and everything on the side. Um, and, and the stuff that was more information about equipment was like way down the page, right? So, um, if you're, if you're looking to buy something, you know, that's, that's awesome. Um, but if you're looking more for information about something, um, then, then you have to hunt a little more, right? You can't just um, kind of go by how it used to be, where it's like, well, I'll just look at like, the first one or two things, and then that'll be it. Um, you have to do a little more legwork. Um, and uh, yeah, so if you, if you are interested, um, I recommend the article. They talk about uh, three different searches and how um, the results are maybe not as good as you might think they should be. Um, one is, is, I mean, it was about t-shirts. So it's like, yeah, you're gonna get lots of, st <laughs> lots of stuff about buying t-shirts, like buy, buy my t-shirts. Um, but there is also an example um, in the, the written portion, there is a, a little video summary, but in the written portion, they talk about another search that was about um, a, a legislative um, proposition in Nevada a, a while back. And then there's one about, I believe it's looking for physical therapy services, right? Um, and so it, it talks a little bit about how um, Google has changed, right? In, in terms of more focus on um, buying stuff and keeping you in, in the Google um, environment. So like the, uh, the, they had the ads, but then they also had like their map, right? Um, which is Google Maps is another one of their products. Um, depending on what it is, they might have YouTube videos. They own YouTube, right? So um, just a little bit, a little bit of information um, to keep in mind that things things have changed a bit. Okay. Yeah, maybe Christine, if I can just elaborate on what you said. Like you said, if you're looking to buy CPAP equipment, sometimes those that is exactly the information you want to know. Or if you just want to know what the definition of CPAP is. Google will give you that definition right away. So there's a bunch of that, like we call it the quick and dirty stuff mm -hmm. that can be really helpful. But if you've, um, if you're looking more of a segue into um, the other sort of information that might be helpful that Google has, right? Like 
um, blogs that have been posted about CPAPs or different associations and CPAPs, uh, resources for patients, um, those kinds of things that are more helpful to inform your practice or that are just sort of more than a, here's where you can buy a CPAP and, um, and here's what a CPAP is. That stuff has now gotten a little bit, a little bit, you have to do a bit more scrolling. Yes. Not, not to belabor that, but yes. Um, gotta, you gotta, you gotta look a little harder. Um, and Orvi mentioned the quick answers and I, I just want to talk about the quick answers. I'll call it a function. Um, that something that is really quite nice about Google, right? Like it can give you quick answers. Um, so like Orvi is, is kind of, I, I don't leave the house really these days. Um, so Orvi is my, is my source of information <laughs> about the weather. But if I wanted to know, it's like, okay, well, what, what is the weather? I can type in, you know, weather, Winnipeg, and it'll just, it'll just pop up and be like, it's minus 19 and feels like minus 30. Christine say. Um, For the record, I'm just walking the dog and walking <laughs> my kids to and from school. It's not like I'm out experiencing the world right now. Well. Not, not to imply anything. Um, oops, too far. Okay, so Orvi also mentioned the dictionary, right? You can write define and then something, right? Um, and it'll come up with a definition. Sometimes you don't even have to write define, uh, depending on what it is. If it's something that's um, a little bit more of a uh, specialized vocabulary, like some kind of like professional jargon or what have you, sometimes it'll have a definition right at the top without even um, without even you saying to find. But um, let's see if I, uh, I might rely on you to help me with my spelling here. So I'm gonna do the define was a Vavo. Uh, Vasovagal, so V-A-S-O-Vagal, pardon me. Yeah. Let's just go just define Vasovagal. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And even in the, um, kind of the, the guessing box. I, I can't remember what the technical term is. I call it the guessing box, um, where it's trying to figure out what you want. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, you want to know what this means. Here's the definition, right? Um, but it's also, what's the vasovagal response? What's this, 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 this? Um, so I'm like, define vasovagal response. And presto, there you go. Um, it has a nice little definition um, from the Mayo Clinic. Um, but then they also have you know, some some additional information below, like if, if I want to know more than just, hey, what does that mean, right? Um, and that can be very handy. At least I find it very handy. Um, another, um, <clears throat> excuse me, kind of nifty thing about kind of the, the quick answers is depending on what you're looking for, sometimes um, it like it's more than just a little paragraph. So like if I were to type in COVID-19, um we've got so much information um so it's got some top stories um it it knows that i'm in, in manitoba so over on the side here it's got you know the last 14 days map of cases um we've got some case overview for manitoba and canada and worldwide we've got some stats um, more local news down below um, and then it gets into things like you know symptoms and prevention and and all of that kind of stuff all right, so I mean, this is a little bit um, of an exception. I, you don't, you're not going to find this level of of compilation of information for everything. Um, but depending on on what it is you're looking for, sometimes it'll it'll give you quite a bit of um, information just up front. Right. Okay. All righty. Oh, there we go. So um, the other thing that's kind of handy that it, at least that I use Google for, uh, and it's similar to like using your phone when you're like, hey Siri or, or hey Google, is you can do conversions. Um, I bake from time to time. So it's like, you know, what is, the, I want to know what the temperature is for in, in Fahrenheit for a Celsius temperature is, or like what's a moderate oven. Um, he's <laughs> actually an expert baker. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> Uh, and yeah, we'll talk about that another time. Um, and then you can also like you can do translations, um, which I'm sure you you guys know about as well. Um, and the nice thing about Google Translate, if you're looking for research um, that's done in another language and there's like an abstract, 
you can pop that into Google Translate um, and it might not be perfect, but it can give you an indication of whether this is something important enough that you need to get a translation of it. Um, I mean, most most times that's not, that's a, that's a pretty extreme uh, case, but um, depending on, on what kind of research you're doing, um, sometimes that can be useful as well. Okay. Um, a quick quick couple notes that you might already know about. Um, you don't have to worry about capitalization, um, and there are other things like quotation marks that look for phrases, and you'll get different results, right? Um, and sometimes it's a mystery because you think maybe the quotation marks should get you better results, but they don't. <laughs> the without quotation marks gets you better results. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a real quick one. Um, Elf and all policies. Oops. and Australia, because they've done some work there. Okay, so health and all policies, Australia. Um, we've got a whole bunch of results here, some stuff from um, the uh, South Australia's government, some stuff from the WHO. Um, there's an article from uh, Biomed Central Public Health, right? Um, if I take the quotations out, Okay, I still get, um, oh, um, the, the, the South Australia thing is still at the top. Um, they have now health and all policies in South Australia. This is a PubMed article, I can tell because I recognize the URL, um, and that would have been elsewhere in the results before. So, I mean, in this case, the results are not incredibly different, but um, sometimes uh, it, it, it can surprise you. All right. Orby's probably itching to talk about, about her bit. So I'm gonna keep on going here. Um, like I said, uh, you can use phrases, you can not use phrases, um, but you don't need to use things like if and so and how, um, because that's gonna actually change the results that you get. Okay, and so really our recommendation is don't ask a question, like distill it down, it's like, what's the answer you want, right? Um, and think about the terms that you're using. So our example here on the screen, a myocardial infarction is gonna get you different results than heart attack, right? Because that's the more professional term versus something that you know, you know, the everyday person on the street is gonna talk about, right? Okay, um, it's very forgiving for spelling. I don't know if you, you noticed, I'm not so great a typist. Um, but the default is to do and, right? So instead of saying, well, you know, um, I'm interested in whole of government policy, I'm, there's also kind of another way to, you know, to talk about the health and all policies. So if I were to type like a whole bunch of different terms for the same thing, it's gonna look for all of those terms together instead of looking at it as this or this or this, right? So something to keep in mind. All right, punctuation, don't matter. Um, things like uh, C++ is a computer language, that's, that's, a, that's a thing, so it will uh, uh, recognize the punctuation in that case, but otherwise you don't really have to worry about it. Um, and you can also search within sites, um, different particular file types using these little commands. So right, so if you were like, I want to know about uh, mental health from CIHI, You'd say site www.cihi.ca and mental health, and it's going to look for that phrase on that site. Okay, uh, this is particularly handy if your website sucks, like uh, the U of M's website. <laughs> you want to find something, so you can you can do a search um, kind of in a roundabout way that way. Um, Likewise, I mentioned different file types. So if you're interested in presentations, if something is an article and you think you know it's probably going to be a PDF, um, you can kind of narrow down your results by specifying a file type. So file type and then whatever the extension would be at the end of that file type. Okay. Um, one that I don't use a lot but I really love is the asterisk. Um, so you don't have to have the exact phrase. So here we've got robot assisted blank surgery. So it'll look for robot assisted heart surgery, laparoscopic surgery, robot assisted knee surgery, 
anything that that fits in between those is going to come up. Okay. All right. I'm going to flip it on over to Orvi because um, I believe we are at the halfway point. So she's going to talk a little bit about the advanced search and some other things to think about when you are Googling. Thanks. And we'll just do a screen share switch, I think. Um, so Christine will stop sharing her screen. I'll add mine. And just maybe to provide while we do that, to provide an example of when Christine says, give Google commands, don't ask it questions. That's things like, um, oh, it is not letting me share. Hold on. Does that help? That helped a lot. Thank you. Okay. Um, so that would be an example of you don't need to type in who is Manitoba's health minister. You can just type in Manitoba health minister, and and Google will then um, Google will then provide that to you. Are you still there, Christine? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. I just went. I could see both of us, and now I just see me. And we all know how unnerving it is to. Um, to just uh, have yourself projected back at you during uh, virtual sessions. So um, uh, what I wanted to talk about right now was, uh, just as we're talking about thinking about privacy and we're thinking about the fact that Google remembers our searches and we all get creeped out when, you know, we've been searching for something on our computer and then we pick up our phone and we start getting ads for the um, the things that we might have been searching for. So Christine's probably now, when she picks up her phone and looks at Facebook, she might get a CPAP ad now that she was um, talking to us today about CPAP. So um, you may, I was when I was over here, you'll see the hand side, um, there's a picture of me, that's because I'm signed into my Google account. So should you sign into your Google account? Uh, when you're searching for things or should you not? Well, the pro is that Google remembers what you search for and the kinds of things that you clicked on. And the con is the same thing. Google remembers what you search for and which results you clicked on. So I know that when I search for things on my work computer and versus uh, on my home computer, I certainly get different results. And sometimes that's good. Sometimes you might want to see, like you might have patients coming in to see you and they're saying like, oh, well, I Googled about this. Or if you're telling your patients to Google things, please don't do that. Um, but if, if you're interested in what they see when they type CPAP versus when you type CPAP, um, then you might want to sign out of your account. So certainly, um, I, I know that logging into my account um, and I, my Google is smarter and it knows the kinds of things that I like, which tend to be more authoritative health res um, resources. But every once in a while, I will um, sign into, I'm just gonna pop this onto my screen here. And um, yeah, um, every so often I'll pop into a different browser or I'll have a desire to be searching on the internet um, in private. And sometimes that's if I've been making edits to a website and I want to see what it looks like um, in different browsers. Uh, but also sometimes it's just to see what different results are provided. So there's instructions here. We're, we're going to send you our slide deck um, afterwards. Uh, so you, if you're interested in clicking on these links, you can. Uh, so there's instructions for Chrome and Firefox. But there's also other browsers that you can search in private. Um, Christine likes DuckDuckGo. I've never used that. So the next time I need to be searching things in private, then I can do that. And uh, you might have different reasons to search uh, for things in private. It might be so that you don't get ads for that on your phone. Um, and like I mentioned, it might be so that you can uh, see what other people's um, searching results are getting. So Google Scholar, that's where I am now. Um, and this is, so Google Scholar is a subset of Google and it is of, um, it is of academic literature. So if um, there's, a, our favorite health database is PubMed, but we know that can be daunting. Um, it's kind of complicated to search. You uh, might be just looking for um, something rudimentary or maybe you're looking for something that's, uh, that you didn't find in PubMed. 
Um, so you can come to Google Scholar and it gives you journal articles. Um, and also books. And that's that's something that PubMed doesn't um, do the greatest job at doing. Um, it tends to give you old results at the top. So you can use on the left-hand side, um, the, the you can change the time frame. So if you're just looking for something new, uh, not that there's anything wrong with things that are a little older, um, but you can uh, do your custom ranges or include by date. Uh, so those are some kind of simple advanced features that you might want to do. Um, and the types of things that are in Google, like Christine says, uh, those spiders are out there searching all of the internet and they found things that have advertised themselves as the um, being academic publications, things from professional societies. So what we need to watch out for is uh, any time is that what uh, what we're finding is actually um, an actually uh, an academic published article? Because believe it or not, I don't know if if uh, people know, but um, it costs a you can make a lot of money pretending to be an academic publication because people will pay you um, to put their work on the internet. So. Something like this, you'd want to just do a double check. Um, what is APA PsychNet? Is the American Psychological Association really a thing? Um, this is sometimes where Google is really helpful because if you're not sure, once you get into one of these articles, like if it's seeming too good to be true, or I mean, some of these um, uh, publications, uh, they have really clear red flags. Like they might only have five articles published in them or they might have all kinds of spelling mistakes, or the abstract really might not make any sense at all. Um, but you can also just, you know, like do a copy paste of American Psychological Association, pop that into your Google search, and, well, we can do that. American Psychological what was it? Association, I'm gonna pop on that and see what Google tells me. And it tells me that it's a professional association. There's lots of information here about it, and I can scroll through and, and learn a little bit more. So sometimes that's necessary, sometimes not. Um, Google Scholar, it's free. It's really easy to search for, just like in Google. And um, it's a really great resource that if you're looking for journal articles, then um, it's a great place to go. Okay, so uh, just expanding on that a little bit more. Um, Oh, we should have, we were, Christine and I were, uh, often we do polls and um, and to try to make sure that uh, everybody's engaged and and with us and, and to see what your favorite things are. Um, and one of our, one of our favorite things is the crap test. So I'd love to hear, you can enter in the chat if you want. Uh, do you know what the crap test is? Have you ever used it? Do you like it? Uh, this is a tool that you can use to critically appraise your results. So you've been on Google, you've steered clear of the ads, you've um, found some places that have some seemingly reliable uh, information, and now you want to do um, your first sort of take of your critical appraisal. Or and me. yes. Sorry, before before we move on to uh, yeah. evaluation, um, I just wanted to to throw out um, that you mentioned that Google Scholar is good for articles. Yeah. Um, if you are interested in things like uh, government reports or statistics or things like that, then that's more of a regular Google kind of uh, search. Um, right. Because they focus on the scholarly literature in Scholar. Thank you. No great. problem. Great. Yeah. Great distinction. Um, yeah, so the crap test. And one of the reasons it's my favorite is because it's really easy to remember. It's not onerous and it just, it sort of gets your brain thinking in that way um, to be looking with a bit of a critical eye. So it's, there's so many other tools. We have a whole other webinar um, that you can access on our MyNet website on critical appraisal. But for just like, you know, you're on Google and you're looking at stuff and you want to know, can I trust this or is this some kind of propaganda? Um, you can use the CRAP test. So it's an acronym that stands for currency, reliability, authority, 
and purpose or point of view. And um, so when you're looking at things, you want to say, how current is this? And you, for whatever you're searching for, um, you might need it more current or it might not matter. So cognitive behavioral therapy, it's been around for a while. If you're just looking for an overview, something that's a little bit older is probably just going to be is probably going to be just fine. But if there was some new, um, you know, CPAP machine you were interested in, or you know that in the last year or five years that CPAPs have really um, uh, they've really Safe. changed or they've really evolved, then maybe you want to be looking for something more current. Or certainly with COVID. Um, when we were, when COVID first hit in the spring and Christine and I were um, involved in, in some research projects here at the university, uh, being a week old often was not current enough. Sometimes even being 12 hours old was not current enough. So it really depends what you're searching for, why you need uh, that information. Um, and you also want to look at how current is the information. Sometimes you'll find a site, it looks great. Uh, but the links are dead or it hasn't been updated in the last 10 years. And sometimes the information on there is still relevant and valid. Um, other times, not okay. Then for reliability, then you want to um, start thinking about, is this supported by evidence? So is this uh, just someone's opinion or are there a bunch of references in it? And even just quickly scanning what are those references? Do they just go to other things that are exactly the same as this? Or are they linking to academic publications or to government publications? Or how is, how is this point of view supported? Uh, also, it, has it been peer reviewed? And is it balanced? Or is it just one side of the opinion? So if it is one side of the opinion, you might say, okay, well, that's fine. Um, but you want to be careful that it doesn't just confirm your, your bias, uh, and that you also, you might also then need to go and search for, um, to search for something that gives you that other, um, perspective. Can I tell us again what CRAP stands for? Yes, absolutely. So here's our slide on that. Currency, reliability. Next, we're going to talk about authority and then purpose and point of view. So thank you for that in the chat. Um, so authority. So here we're asking about who is the author or the creator? Do they call themselves a doctor or are they really a doctor? Um, are they actually really who they say they are? Sometimes um, uh, journals that are posing to be journals, they take famous scholars and they take their pictures and put their name on and say, this person is associated with us when really they're not. Who publishes it? Um, who sponsors it? Uh, are there ads? I mean, increasingly, like Christine has pointed out, there's more and more and more ads everywhere. And that doesn't necessarily mean that something is not authoritative, but we do want to um, take caution, especially if it's for something like, what are the best CPAP machines? Well, if they're also going to sell you their CPAP on their website, maybe you better find a more neutral source. Uh, and also, what does the URL tell you? Um, .ca, .com, .gov, .edu, those tend to be more authoritative or more reliable than something like .pizza. Again, you can scan and see for what you're doing, does this make sense, um, and do you just want to check it out? And finally, what is the purpose behind what you're looking at? Is it to provide health information to patients? Um, is it to... Uh, you know, propagandate and try to get forth um, a certain viewpoint? Um, is the creator or author trying to tell you something? And is it biased? And sometimes there are great pieces that tell you both sides of a story. Other times you have to go to totally different sources to see um, what, um, to see what both sides of that story are or where all the gray zones are. Uh, this is also another favorite of mine. I often have this printed out and um, quickly accessed on my on my desk. It's the same type of things as the crap test. Um, it's a lovely visual. It's not as sort of quick in your head um, as crap, uh, you know, currency, reliability, author, purpose, point of view. Um, but it is really nice. And so you put it up. And one of our favorites is also, is it a joke? 
Um, I'm looking forward to April 1st of 2021 because April 1st of 2020, everything was too raw because of COVID. Usually it's my favorite day uh, for critical appraisal because there's always somebody that has missed the fact that it's April 1st and that these sites are having joke things. Um, uh, but uh, this is another great source that you can have just to kind of help you think through when you're um, evaluating what information you found on Google or your search engine of choice. So um, some other things you want to be thinking about, is this information at the right level for your needs? Uh, you might, um, so especially if you're looking for things for your patient or maybe for a family member, it might need to be written at a different level than what you, a health expert, is looking at or vice versa. Maybe you found like the basic patient info and you're like, well, now, now I know what a CPAP is, but now I need to know more about them. Um, it's a different level of evidence that you might be looking for. Have you looked at that variety of sources? And just like, are there spelling errors? Is it just kind of sloppy? Every end. And if you're ever unsure, you can for some help. Now, sometimes you send us hard ones and we put our whole team on them. That's like our, as we're having our morning, uh, morning team, um, hello. Uh, then we often say like, how, how is this real or not? Sometimes um, in, different, in different science areas, they write at such a technical level that it just sounds like gibberish, uh, but it's not. Um, and sometimes too, it's from different parts of their world where they've written in English and the English isn't that great, but sometimes it's still a really great resource. Okay, I hinted at these predatory publishers. If you've ever published an article yourself, if you finished a, a master's thesis, um, you may have gotten uh, advertisements to publish in journals. Usually they're addressed to uh, like Dr. Dingwall or Dr. Hello, oh Dingwall, or things like this, like names that you would never call yourself, degrees that you don't actually have. They're inviting you to be the keynote speaker at this amazing conference somewhere you know, exotic. Um, if you want to know more about these, so it's a real problem. Um, if you want to know more, we have a whole other uh, session uh, just dedicated to predatory publishing. There's some great uh, resources like the Think, Check, Submit. And it's again, just a checklist to take you through. Um, and the University of Saskatchewan also has a really great resource. It's geared towards its students, um, but if that's you, uh, then this is definitely something um, good to check out. And it just sort of talks about predatory journals. So um, the moral of that story is that, uh, you know, academic journals are great. They're really important for informing uh, health, but, um, uh, and especially in Google Scholar, there's a whole bunch of ones that are posing as, as academic journals, but they aren't actually. So as with everything, check your sources, critical appraise, check your sources, use things like the crap test or that other infographic we shared. Um, and I think bottom line, Google is a really great resource. It can give us a lot of great information. There are certainly ways that you can have it work better and smarter for you. Um, but just be really cautious as you're out there in the wilds of the internet. So we're scheduled here today for one more minute. We thank you very much for coming. Um, we are available for questions um, and you can always contact us after as well. We did have uh, a question about what the URL was for Scholar. Um, oh. So uh, if, you, if, if you ever are like, I don't remember what it is, you can actually go just put into Google Scholar and then that'll be the first thing that comes up, but it's yeah. scholar.google.ca. Yeah, so right here in my search results. So yes, like Christine said, Googled it and there, there it is, scholar.google. Sorry, yours is .com for whatever reason, mine came up as CA. So I don't oh. know why, but there you go. I wonder um, if they're different. I don't know if they're different. That's an excellent question. Shall we test it? What are we gonna, yeah. what are we gonna, what are we gonna search? Are you on CA? I'm on CA. Okay, cognitive behavioral therapy. 
this is what librarians do for fun. <laughs> is um, is we uh, we test different things and okay. see if we get the same results. So mine is different. Oh, I'm also. Oh, but you're logged in as you. So this might be a case of me being logged in as me and you being logged in as you. But my first result is called Pros and Cons of Online Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, followed by a book, Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, Research and Practice in Health and Social Care. And then Effectiveness of Brief Cognitive Behavioral Therapy Intervention on the Treatment of Schizophrenia. Wow. So those are very different results. I mean, all still sort of the same, but um, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, different. they're all related to cognitive behavioral therapy. Um, but again, yeah, it could be a case of mine are tailored to me and Orvi's are tailored to her based on what we've searched in the past. Yep, and it also, I don't tend to search Google Scholar all that much. Christine might search it a lot. So your Google Scholar just might be smarter. <laughs> smarter, <laughs> yes. Okay, okay. Um, thanks so much, everyone. We'll hang out for just a minute or so. Um, in case you do have more questions, we will circulate our the slides um, that we use today. And thanks so much for attending. Our next webinar is coming up in February. Mm -hmm. We're, uh, we also, when we send the slides, we'll send a, a link to a super quick uh, feedback form. So if you have thoughts um, about our session today, uh, future sessions, please, by all means, uh, let us know. That'd be great. And otherwise, happy Inauguration Day. <laughs> Bye, everybody.